Hey, what's going on everybody? This is Eric Parker with one number back with a, another video blog for you. Uh, so this actually came from some work that I did with a client. And what we were trying to do was to solve a pretty interesting question, which was this. We've got four years worth of data and we wanted to say, how did 2018 compare to the average of the previous three years, right? Uh, so in this case, this is just a really messy graph because there's four lines. But if we were able to say, yeah, you know, there's one line that represents the average of these three points and we want to know how we did, um, that might help clear things up a little bit uh, and, and just make this a little bit more valuable and easier to use for analysis. So uh, in solving for this, we realized that we needed uh, a handful of different calculations. So I'm going to spend some time uh, building those out. So let's do this. We're going to go ahead and create a new worksheet here. And um, as you can see, the x-axis in that previous worksheet was just month. So I'm going to go ahead and make that happen. Take order of the columns, change it to discrete month. Okay, so my fit to entire view. And now we need to create um, essentially two different calculations, one for this year's sales, and then the other would be uh, the average of the previous three years. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to create a calculated field for, uh, I'm going to call this sales this year year there we go and it's just going to be this uh, if the year of my order date equals the year of today then sales pause there for a moment nice thing about this is this is dynamic so once the clock changes to 2019 um, we'll have a, a new year to swing here so i'll hit okay and show sales this year on rows and let's just do a quick check. So we've got 118,000 for November. If we go back to all data, we've got 118,000 for November. So that looks good. Now we need to create a calculated field to come up with the average of the previous three years. The first thing that I'm gonna do is just create a calculated field that just gives us the sales from the last three years. I'll just call this sales uh, previous three years. And the way that we want to do this is because we want this to be dynamic, we're going to need to use what's called the date diff function, which just calculates the difference between a start date and an end date. So here's what this will look like. I'm going to say if the date diff in years between the order date and today is less than or equal to three and Go ahead and copy that string again. The, the difference in years is uh, greater than or equal to one than sales. Okay, so let me zoom in here. A uh, couple important notes when you're using the date diff function. First of all, when you are defining the date part that you want to calculate at, um, needs to be in single quotation, lowercase, so lowercase y instead of uppercase y, and singular. Okay. So in this case, I'm saying, okay, the difference is it's uh, at most three years and at least one year. So I said, okay, I'm gonna drag my sales from my previous three years onto my sheet right now. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and just drag my year of order date onto color so you can see that, well, this looks terrible, but here are my 2018 points and you can see 2017, 16, and 15. Those are all still showing up uh, because you know I've got a sum of my previous years. So let me go ahead and take that off here again. Uh, boy, what have I done? Let me just go back a couple steps. Okay, so these are my sums. So obviously the sums of my previous three years are going to be more than um, just the you know actual of this year. And you might think like, okay, well let's just switch my previous three years to average, and then we'll be good. Um, but we run into a bit of an issue here because what average does is it actually gives you the row level average. What I mean by that is, let's say you had 10,000 orders. Um, this $225 just means that your average sale in January was $225. Not that the average of your three Januaries is $225. Kind of an important distinction there. So we're actually gonna to need to create another calculated field for this, and this is what this is gonna look like. Create one more, I'll call this um, sales last three year average, and we're gonna use a fixed function. 
So what fixed is going to do is I'm going to tell Tableau, hey, fixed on the year of my order date and the month of my order date, give me my sum of sale. Okay. So this is going to give me uh, three distinct values. Um, oh, actually, we'll pause there for a moment. I don't want to use this my standard sales field because then that's going to give me the average or the sums for all four years. I just want the sums for the previous three years. Uh, so here's what this is going to do. Now for 20, the math here real quick, 15, 16, and 17, I'm just going to end up with three distinct values. And then I just want Tableau to give me the average of those three values. Okay, I'm going to remove that previous three years field. I'm going to get my last three year average. Drag that onto my axis. And now I've got something that looks like this. So I'm going to do a quick test and then I'm going to open that calculated field up again in case you wanted to take a longer look at it. So for this year in March, I've got $58,000 and my previous average was uh, for the previous three years was about 48,000. That means that the sum of those three years should be a little bit shy of 150,000. So let me go back to my all data. I've got March at 58,000 for 2018. That looks right. And then let's figure out what the sum of those previous three values were. So I've them all selected. You see there in the tooltip, that sum is $146,000. So right in that range that we were looking for. So one more time, first calculated field I created was sales for this year, just simply tested. Is the year the order date the same as the year today? Second piece, I created another calculated field that only gave us sales for the previous three years, but not this year, by using the date difference function. Okay. And then last, what we did is we created a fixed calculation that allowed us to basically say, only summarize the values at the year and month level, and then give us the average of whatever those three values are. That's how we ended up with this. Okay. So, of course, we spent some time formatting this and making it look pretty, uh, but those are the fundamental building blocks that you need to be able to do this. So, thank you so much for joining for another video blog. As you could probably guess, we'll be back with another one next week. So, I plan on talking to you then. Thanks so much.